Hey everybody, welcome back to Victoria 3. I hope you're having a wonderful day. The opposition members, you know, those pesky people who think that sending kids to primary school is a bad thing. Yeah, well, they have some demands they'd like to put forward, and we're going to take a look at those now. More pragmatically inclined members of the industrialists currently opposed to the passing of compulsory primary school have offered to change their stance were they to be offered a certain political concession. Such concessions would not be popular with the armed forces, however. Let's take a look at how our relationship is with the armed forces. They're quite loyal. We have some leeway there, right? We have a little bit of, of give on this take. And if we acquiesce to their demands, we get a plus 15% chance of success. And we lose three uh, standing with the, um, with the armed forces, which, I mean, I think we can afford that. So let's go ahead. So now the primary school debate has a little bit more big of a chance of success. Yeah. I think that's a great thing. All right. So in this video, <clears throat> we need to solve a couple of things. We have a couple of states here who are barely struggling uh, with their access to the American market. And we don't want there to be a struggle to get access to the market. And it has to do with infrastructure. So we're going to need to expand infrastructure in Pennsylvania. We're going to need to expand it in Virginia. Because you can see the infrastructure is a little bit off on that too. And we'll give Virginia a level 2 road railway. It's fine. Um... West Virginia is really struggling with it, and their standard of living is impoverished. They are not happy. They are below their their expected standard. So we're going to need to give them more access to the market as well. So let's give them a level two railway. And they've got a lot of arable land. There's probably a lot of farmers here too. So I'm going to try to keep the price of everything down by giving them a couple of farms at level one. So that the farmers can actually do what the farmers want to do. And eh, I don't really want to give them anything that's meaningful. You know, like like arms industries and stuff. Because they are still a southern state. So at the end of the day, they could still revolt when I get rid of slavery. Which is going to happen very soon. It's 1859. I would like to do it within the next couple of years. But it does depend on, well, a couple of things. It depends on this passing. Which is going to make some people mad. We can also see that Enact Wealth Voting has started to get some medium support here. And the Southern Planters and the Industrialists are kind of teaming up with this, this bill that they want passed. And that sucks because I don't want Wealth Voting. I mean, okay, I wouldn't mind Wealth Voting, okay, in this particular game. Uh, because most of the wealthy in my country anyway, because I've been focusing on the North... Most of the wealthy in my country are Yankee anyway. So this would kind of kick these two in the foot, especially the Southern planters. So if they pass it, it's like, okay, sure, okay. But I don't want to pass it. I, I don't want this on the docket. I want to abolish slavery, which of course is going to radicalize them and then off they go. So um, we're going we're gonna to take a look at that, all right? We have 2.75 million loyalists holding pretty steady there. And we have just under... A million radicals. And it's, again, all we have to do is improve their quality of life. And they will stop being radicalized. All right? That'll just be how it is. We have electrical generation done, which means we can start getting power plants. We can start putting in uh, street lights and urban centers and all sorts of things. Okay? Which is kind of cool. I think I want to hit the society tree real quick and just see what we have available for this. And I'm kind of looking at... Steel frame buildings seems interesting to me um, because this does add to infrastructure and everything. And it also uh, allows us to <clears throat> unlock the steel frame building uh, construction type for the construction sector, just moving our society forward a bit more. But the interesting thing it does here is it leads to elevators, which is a cool technology. It also leads to unlocking the Statue of Liberty as well as the Eiffel Tower. But I'm mostly interested in the Statue of Liberty. And the Statue of Liberty grant grants prestige. Grants migration attraction. Gives me more bureaucrats per level. Which is awesome. Um, and it looks like... Does it give me money per, 
upper level in government wages? I take it away. I don't remember. Um, twenty plus twenty urbanization per level, which is good uh, to get you know dwindle down the power of the rural farmers and the and the uh, southern planters. Plus one percent throughput per level, uh, all sorts of things. Right? It, it gives me a lot of stuff, and I like this. And it looks to me like you just have to have, or the, like there are only one available because it says there is no Statue of Liberty in the in, in United States of America. So you're only allowed to have one. Just kind of cool. We could also get the opportunity here to steal the Eiffel Tower from France, which kind of feels like a cool thing too. Alternative history. Let's have both monuments. So I'm going to start researching steel free buildings, if nothing else, just to improve the infrastructure in the United States, um, at least in the urban areas, but also to get started on maybe getting our Statue of Liberty up and running, which seems really nice. All right, so again, we're expanding the railway in these states so that we can maintain 100% market uh, access. But we're also losing tax dollars right now because our taxation capacity in New York is not sufficient. Our government is too small for the number of people we have. So we need to agree it because right now we're only collecting like 88-ish percentage uh, percent of the taxes we should be collecting. So let's go ahead and change that too. Uh, we want to go into New York, buildings, government administration. I'm going to up this by two levels. And then I'm going to go in and make sure that those are at the top of the list so that I can start collecting taxes now. All right. So in 14 weeks, our capacity to tax should go up. Now we have a ton of bureaucracy, as you see. Let's see if we can spend that on some trade routes. North German migration. The Germans like South Dakota, apparently. Did you know that? Germans, were you aware that you like South Dakota? We have fabric discounted right now. And as a result, clothing industry is holding firm. 0%. People can rejoice about that. That's good. Um, we're keeping wheat prices down. Services prices are discounted. So everybody can be happy about these things. But we still don't have... The price of tools under control and the groceries are still just a little bit high. But ultimately, I'm keeping the, the staples that are really important prices down. Except iron. Iron is still here, right? That's not good. So, and steel also is a little high, probably because iron is high. So, we need to go in and do something about that too. And these guys are struggling to hire anybody, which is interesting. Um, let's get dynamite here. Uh, we can get more engineers this way and also more iron this way. And if I use the steam donkey, we need less labor anyway. So your struggles in hiring will be less, less meaningful. Um, now, we have explosives. And now that I'm telling them to use explosives, they're really unproductive. And that's because explosives are very expensive. And so are tools now, because I've just, you know, raised all that up. So I still need to have more tools. Oh, so many more tools are needed. Now, Am I making tools in any other state? I do feel like I want to start incorporating other states. Um, we're getting to the point now where we're pretty stable. We've got a lot of loyalists. We're profitable while we're constructing, which is a very good thing. Um, so I can start introducing new states into this mix. Um, but I would like to get one more change in government before I start doing that. And I can't decide if I want to do that change before or after the slavery debate. I suppose it depends on how long this takes. If this is really quick then I think I'll do my, my other plans uh, before this. But if this is really slow, as it's starting to look like it's going to be very slow, well, maybe not then. A donation of knowledge. Abner Gurney has offered to spend some of their personal wealth to fund the creation of a university in Maine. Same kind of thing. The industrialists are trying to you know do that. I actually would like to not give them more population attraction. And the reason for that is because they're starting to team up with the Southern planters and they're starting to get more support and wealth voting. And if I give them more attractiveness, I might be compelled. I, I may have to placate this and I, I don't want to do that. Uh, so I'm not going to give them a platform. It's going to make them a little angrier at me, but at least it doesn't make their population more attractive. I'm also, I think, going to go in just to be safe for myself here. Um, We've been suppressing the Southern planters, and they're down to 15.6%. Uh, the industrialists are down to a mere 7%. So that's pretty good. So I want to make these guys even less uh, e even, uh, even less popular, right? So I'm going to go back to suppressing the Southern planters because their cloud has been growing, and I don't want that to happen. 
uh, we still have pretty much everybody happy except those two groups. And if I get an opportunity to make the industrialists happy, uh, I'll probably take it just so I don't have two groups upset at me. And um, yeah, I'll probably do it with private health insurance. That's probably one way to make these guys happy is with private health insurance. They don't like public health insurance. I can only imagine that's because, you know, industrialists are the super focused on privatizing everything group. Um, they tend to be, uh, well, they, I think capitalists end up being industrialists a lot of times, I think, in this game. But I might be wrong on that. I haven't had enough experience to know that. But in any case, that's their mentality. So um, we want to see, you know, laissez-faire, right? This is their mentality. Uh, if you're not familiar with what that means, it basically just means they believe in the free flow of trade and labor forces. And they just don't without government intervention. Laza Vera is just no government intervention. Let the market do what the market does. And in general, that works. But there are, some, of course, some industries that it doesn't work. Uh, excuse me. It doesn't really work quite as well as it should. Uh, flawed, if you will, uh, it, they, those industries are. Healthcare being one of those things. All right. So um, I am going to go in, but I, I, I'm okay with doing privatized healthcare. Uh, because it's better than what we have now, right? It's, it, we have nothing now. So uh, if they don't want to pass charity hospitals, maybe I can get them on board with getting privatized health insurance. And now that we have pharmaceuticals, that's probably going to be uh, possible to do. Let me take a look really quick at declared interests. And we're not declaring this as an interest, which is weird. Let's go ahead and do that. Um, I don't really care about Brazil, honestly. Um, you guys can have that. I wish I could get these states back, and I might start building up my army. Probably a good idea, actually. Start building up our army. Maybe we'll just continue into Russia and just bombard them. Um, actually, what I should do is start making friends with the British. Now, I know I said I was going to eventually go and, you know, maybe get some revenge on the British. And I still plan to, as long as the game lets me. It's 1860, so um, I'm not entirely sure how many years we have. But if I could, if I can increase my relationship with the British, this would make me happy because right now we've got France as an ally, and that's wonderful. Um, less than am of oh right, never mind. Um, so we, I, I have that as an ally. I'd like to get Great Britain on my on my side because when I start to invade Mexico's territory here to get my states back, it's possible that the other countries that are these other major powers here are not going to like how aggressive I am in doing that. And they may choose to take the, another side. They may choose to side with Mexico. And then I'd have to deal with two fronts, potentially. What I'd rather have is them agreeing to it because they're my allies. And then allowing me to take all of the states all in one big war. Possibly just the entirety of Mexico. We'll see. All in one big war. And uh, in that point, then I can also try to go after Canada. Now, that part's even more troubling. Because Canada currently is a, uh, I don't know if they're a puppet state or uh, they're a dominion. That's what it's called. Uh, they are under the, uh, they are dominion of the Great Britain. All right. So having them be a dominion of Great Britain puts a little bit of a problem with me trying to get Washington, Oregon, and Idaho back. Now Maybe I could just give them Alberta and they'll let me have this. I don't think that's how that works in this game. I don't think we can do like an Upper Peninsula for Toledo kind of trade. Um, if you don't know Michigan's history, we had a we had a trade early on in our history where we essentially just gave Toledo to Ohio in exchange for the Upper Peninsula. That's I thought they they apparently thought that that was a good trade. Ohio, do you do you are you enjoying Toledo? <laughs> are you enjoying Toledo? Because I gotta tell you, we're we are definitely enjoying our Upper Peninsula. We're definitely enjoying that. Lots of wonderful uh, countryside there. Good, great views. We're definitely enjoying that. All right. So um, I need to, real quick, just get an exam uh, examination of the market. And uh, we can see that iron is quite expensive. Um, so before we let any of these construction projects continue, <clears throat> I need to get the iron mines going. And they are going quite well now. I can switch to this pump. We can use less labor. Um, we can switch to the steam donkey, use less labor. And if I use, if I go to dynamite, like I said, um, we could do this, but remember the ones I switched to dynamite are not, 
uh, they're not very productive at the moment. So we, we do need to, to switch that because explosives are expensive. So what I want to do is we'll switch it to dynamite now. We're going to add rail transportation to it. And then what I want to do is I'm going to come over to, I believe it's Indiana. And we have a chemical plant here. Now this chemical plant is producing explosives, but obviously not producing nearly enough of them. We can switch to a vacuum evaporation process, which will produce way more explosives at the cost of a little bit more fertilizer and it will use a little bit more sulfur so this is all around a very good thing to switch to and this will dramatically reduce the price of explosives which should make our iron mines more productive okay so we're going to see the price of explosives now plummet there it is and you can probably see it in the graph soon there it goes uh it is now discounted which should allow the iron industries to really enjoy itself now we do have some turmoil here and that is only probably because the quality of life is below their expected uh quality of life so this little symbol here means that this state is in turmoil they have radical populations and they're also getting some tax waste here by doing so so as long as we can improve the quality of life in west virginia they'll calm down and uh we won't have to deal with them anymore yeah at least not this so um one thing we can do just making sure that they have profitable jobs is one way to do it um so if they can get some hiring going on this factory let's just go ahead and try to subsidize this really quick oh that's good so compulsory primary school just passed and this is great um now it didn't radicalize the industrialists thankfully but well not very well but they still want this wealth voting thing and i don't want them to have that i really don't want them to have that uh, how much transportation do we have here? Okay, railway's not done here. Let's get them a railway to give them more access to the market. So Pennsylvania's railway, Virginia, and Virginia. Let's get the West Virginia one to go first. Uh, and then actually the other West Virginia one to go first next to, okay? So let's get uh, West Virginia to be in a little bit better situation so that we don't have to deal with this uprising happening here because, of course... It's not, it's not great. It looks like they are already starting to improve, probably because they've started to go work on the iron mines. Yep. And uh, it doesn't say productivity is, is up here, but we are producing, and that's pretty much because we are subsidized. So we will be able to see... Oh, the Progressive Party just formed. Really? It's like... Isn't that like 60 years early? I think that's like 60 years ahead of schedule. Um, in any case, um, yeah, so we're going to have rail transportation as soon as that's done, but it's not showing productivity because we are uh, subsidizing it. So if I go in and not subsidize it, um, we should start to see what its actual productivity is soon. And as long as we can keep people employed, which it doesn't look like we can, is it because it's still saying that explosives are too expensive? Well, let's bring this down to nitroglycerin levels instead. No, no, I just need to expand my my dynamite and everything. So let's go ahead and su uh, we'll go ahead and subsidize this for now. The rail system is going to get completed, and then we're going to go into our chemical plant, and we're going to want to expand the chemical plants here and possibly introduce a chemical plant somewhere else. Oh, we already have one in Ohio as well. Perfect. So we'll do the vacuum evaporation here as well. Uh, and that should hopefully get the explosives industry to be a lot better. And we can start trying to subsidize some of these things to keep them afloat temporarily while we calm West Virginia down and get our iron mines going. So the explosives are reasonably priced now. And it looks to me like transportation is expensive and so is tools. So we've done some changes that make tools more expensive again. And this is just that balancing act between all these different states that are offering these different types of things. And uh, because we have so many different territories to manage and so many different types of people to manage, um, you know, if we have a lot of growth over here, for example, they might demand something that puts a weight on some other industries and stuff. And so we have to keep uh, keep looking at that. Partisan papers. Party affiliated newspapers have begun proliferating during this election season. I can't imagine. Wow, that sounds like that reality sounds really scary, doesn't it? Man, I just can't see that ever happening in the United States for real. Uh, um, uh, publications associated with the Progressive Party have been particularly effective in spreading the party line. So if we do this, use the papers brilliantly, that gives them more momentum. Uh, but if I say newspaper circulation is through the roof, this is a boom for publishers, we can see paper mill throughputs go up instead. I, I particularly like that option. So let's increase the amount of paper we're making instead. Now our naval base doesn't have enough mana wars, which like, honestly, I don't know why you have to keep having so many, like, why do you have to build that many mana wars? Okay. Like, 
We don't need this many boats, but apparently we do. So we need to find a state that has uh, a, a ship, a, a dock of some kind, a uh, shipyard. Uh, Rhode Island has a shipyard. And we can tell this to make military ships, which would improve uh, the production of Manowars slightly, but really not that much. Um, I think what we probably uh, should do here is maybe improve the shipyard, but it's not that productive yet. And I'd like to get one that's even more productive. So uh, let's go to our building overview. Let's see if we can find a shipyard that is more productive. Uh, okay, so Massachusetts has one. Apparently that is 8.8. .8. Massachusetts. What? Why, why can't I select Massachusetts? There it is. Okay. I just like, for some reason, my mouth is going around it. Um, so Massachusetts. Yeah, it's short this. So we could take Massachusetts because it's more productive and we'll switch this to military shipbuilding and that productivity should equal out the supply a little bit. And it'll also take some pressure off of other things because uh, since the supply of the other ships won't be so extreme the demand for those will more equally balance with supply and the other ones will start becoming more productive as well um, we have new jersey which is looking like it's not doing much of anything right now unfortunately because we're trying to make steam ships with this ah and steamers right now are very very cheap so they're not very profitable so let's change that by getting our fishing industry to start using steamers um we're going to need our fishing wharfs Specifically, a building that is fishing currently. <laughs> Let's try rural uh, fishing wharfs. Here we go. And we want to take maybe one of our more productive ones, like Maryland. And we, we got steam travelers already doing this, but apparently we need more steam boats being used. So um, Maine will start using the steam trawlers as well. Uh, and this will use more steamers. And I think we could probably do that in Massachusetts. That will bump the price of steamers up to 79 from 28. Uh, which is a pretty big increase. Um, it doesn't look to me... Yeah, I think that's a meaningful change. Let's take that and do that. So, if we make that change... Go to buildings. Um, we should see that the industry for shipyards is booming in all of these locations now. At least we should see this. And New Jersey is now productive again. Because the boats that they're producing are now in demand. So this is going to work. Okay, so that takes care of the shipping industry. Did we take care of West Virginia yet? Well, it looks like we did. Their quality of life has improved, but their infrastructure is still really crap. That's going to get improved with this railway being introduced very soon. See the population changing right before our eyes. So now their infrastructure is being improved. It is closer to what it's supposed to be, but we still need this railway introduced. So let me make sure that this railway is currently being built. Uh, and this looks like it's the yeah, it's this one at the very bottom. So it is it is being built. Our infrastructure is improving right now. And this entire time we've been producing, we have been at a profit, which is very good for us. Of course, we can dip into our credit, dip into our, our debt, and uh, we don't have to worry about, um, well, going into default. Uh, it looks like we're going at belligerence. Uh, from Sulawesi. So I have no idea where that is, um, but somebody is belligerent and the French would like to conquer them. And I'm going to say two arms, but I'm not really going to help them. Um, I'm just going to allow the French to do what they do. And that'll just be the way it is. Uh, now we do have dangerous equipment here, which is a problem. Furniture factories in Ohio have seen an increase in workplace injuries due to increased mechanization and poor safety regulations. Thankfully, they're not kids anymore because kids are in school. Uh, accidents have always happened, but I felt like I used to have time to react. Uh, not this time. I grabbed his arm to pull him out of the way, but I barely got a hold of his wrist before the arm was all I held on to. Yikes. Um, so, if we slow down production, the throughput... It says manufacturing industries. So like all of them? Both the input and output of manufacturing industries. Yeah, like, I don't know if I can afford that kind of hit. And plus, both of these guys hating me more would be a hard thing to do. We cannot pull the brakes on the engines of progress. This would reduce my my uh, approval rating from the trade unions. But I have a lot of I have a lot to go there. It'll also reduce more uh, slightly increase mortality of many different workers in manufacturing industries. That's a tough decision. Now I realize that lives are more important. 
Um, and if this was real life, I probably would go with this one anyway, even though these guys would be uh, slower on my approval. Um, it's only one state, so there is there is that. Like, it's not that big of a deal. But Ohio is one of the major states I'm producing things in. And if I lose any more support with these guys, well, I mean, the Southern Planters, I guess, will be at negative 8. The Industrialists, negative 4. They're still not going to be very happy with me. Tell you what I'll do, though. I'll try to get private health insurance, and that'll get the Industrialists on my good side. Or on my side, I think. So I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to err on the side of human lives. And... Um, I mean, it just, if it's all my industries, though, I don't think I can afford that. If it's every single industry. It says furniture manufacturers. So I, I'm hoping that just furniture manufacturers, the fact that it says manufacturers here. <clears throat> but if I, if it's all manufacturing industries, which is what it looks like, because it says industries. So... Yeah, I don't think I can afford that. I'm sorry, I, I can't afford that. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this one. There's just too much, too much happening there that um, it would force me. To, and the thing is, this is the greater good thing, right? So you might think, oh, well, he doesn't care about human life by doing that. But if I slow this down by 50% for all the industries that I have going on in here, which right now is chemical plants and furniture manufacturers, and I believe the coal mines count as this. Hmm. The glass works, I guess, too. Um, we have a slight deficit with glass in this country. We have a slight deficit with furniture in the country. And uh, the chemical factories need to keep running because they're the prices and the stuff is going to start fluctuating if I shut it down. I would have to expand factories to other places is what I was going to get to. Um, that was my logic before I looked at this. Um, I'd have to expand factories to other places. So it's like it's not even going to matter because they're going to, uh, you know, expand anyway. And there'd be more factories anyway. But now that I look at Ohio, it doesn't have nearly as many buildings as Pennsylvania does. Because I figured it was textile mills and paper mills and everything, right? Steel industry. Like, I figured all that stuff was going to have a hard time. And that was going to be a problem. So, uh, maybe not now. Open hearth process is uh, here. We can get more steel this way, which is a good thing. We're going to need to address iron shortages because of that, though. And West Virginia should now, with this railroad being introduced, have plenty of infrastructure. Yes, it does indeed. And 100% access to the market. Cost of uh, their average uh, standard of living is going way up now. Very good. So um, with that being done, we can now hopefully get to the iron mines. And we don't have to subsidize it anymore. And we're going to expand it and um, get more iron uh, coming in there. I'm also going to expand the tobacco plantation so we can keep trade and also the coal mines in Kentucky so I can get them keep going too. Uh, okay, so we're very close to having our construction queue emptied out, which is going to be very great. Um, it looks to me like the election just happened and I missed it. Uh, that's pretty par for the course. But the Democratic Party has very little clout now, right? Petite bourgeoisie, very little clout. Southern planters being suppressed are only down to 11%. Industrialists, 7.9%. So basically, the the places that I wanted to be in power and the, the people that I wanted to be in control are, in fact, in control. And the Progressive Party is the party that won the election. Uh, we have Barnabas Emerson. Emerson. Immersion? What? Uh, Barnabas Emerson. That's actually a kind of a fun name when you say it multiple times. Say that really fast. Just say it really loud in your room right now. Just Barnabas Emerson. Specifically Barnabas. I think it's a really fun name. Okay. So um, we, I'm going to try to get the industrialist on my good side, right? Um, and I'd like to, again, reduce... I'd like to get rid of slavery if I could. I don't... I think I can do it now. Um, I think we can remove slavery from the world now if i if i want to um reforming government is something i can do by adding the armed forces which are very happy i can add them to the progressive party they want to be a part of the progressive party so i can bring them in and if i bring them in and reform the government this way 98 percent legitimacy i've got a ton of loyalists uh i have very few radicals relative to loyalists and i think if i go into legacy slavery now there's a 36 percent chance of this passing the Southern planters will hate me, but I think everything else will be okay. I think we can finally get rid of this. It's a big, it's a big risk because like, like I said, this, when you, when you hit this, that's it, you know? And, uh, 
I'm almost tempted to go into privatized health insurance first, but I can't do that. Oh. Uh, the chance that privatized health insurance can be inactive must be above 0%. Oh, so I don't have anybody a part of my government that wants this, I see. Well, if I can't do that, then I think Mount might be the right time to either give property women a chance. You know, radical evangelical. This radicalized most more people than slavery does, so. Yeah, I think we go into slavery banned. I think we ban slavery. Um, it's 1861. That, that is the year, right? I mean, this is like the time for that civil war to begin. Um, it's it's kind of right on cue as far as the civil wars start, so... I think we do it now. Barnabas is going to be the president that puts this into place. And this is, again, going to create problems. So I'm going to go ahead and hit this. And uh, this is going to radicalize the South. And uh, we're going to have to do something about that. So I want to have uh, more barracks put in. We have the uh, the money to do this. We're going to have the uh, construction capacity to do this pretty quickly. So um, we're going to put some new barracks into Illinois. Indi Indiana, as well as a, a railway. Um, Ohio already has a level five barracks. Michigan is going to get a level five barracks as well. And we, we really just want this area to have a lot of soldiers ready to go at a moment's notice, right? This is mostly what we want here. So we have a revolution beginning. As you can see, the um, revolution is starting. Wealth voting is actually the, the cause of this, though. Rad radical, very high radicalism here for wealth voting, which is crazy. Um, that's really nuts. Um, so it looks to me like that's what they're doing. They're they have radicalism over wanting me to implement wealth voting. And it looks like the following states will succeed. It's pretty much the North that will end up seceding in this alternative reality if this happened. Which is definitely not what I want. Uh, so I'm a little bit concerned about that because if the North secedes, of course, this is just game over. We definitely don't want that. So um, I might have to pull the trigger and um, maybe take slavery banned off the docket for a year and put slavery and put wealth voting in just to appease them. I really don't want to do that. Um, one thing I might be able to get away with since we have 24,000 surplus, um, if I stop construction projects, I could reduce taxes, which could also help me as well. Um, I take a look at institutions. Home affairs is really going to help me here. Um, and I think colonial, uh, sorry, education, I should probably go into that. So really ramp up education access. And um, we also, if you see, do not have any Southern planters uh, influence bonuses from law enforcement anymore. So properly funding law enforcement used to give a bonus to the Southern planters. And it's been enough years now to where it doesn't. So we're going to go, uh, I think we might just go up and just fully fund this, which will take a long time to do. But it would help me with, you know, turmoil and people getting uprisings and all sorts of stuff like that, which is right now what we have. We have a revolution starting, which I told you, as soon as you start implementing slavery bans, you start getting people pissed off too, too much pissed, off, like way too pissed off. Right. And so we have a 40 percent progress towards this. Um, you can see radicalism of the political movement to enact is plus 60. So this will probably go to 60 percent. And uh, it looks like France is going to war with someone else. So we're going to let them do that. Um, gantry cranes are being here. That's nice. So I think what I want to do to help try to quell this just a little bit, to make people a little bit happier with me, is uh, we have a lot of barracks that are being built. And that's probably all that will be built aside from this government administration building in Wisconsin. We're going to take that away. Barracks are very, very fast. But the problem with barracks is that they're all being built in the north. So again, if this actually happens, I think I just lose. Because I've, I've specifically made all of my army in the north so that if the south was to rise up, we would have way more soldiers and conscripts. Um, but if the north is the one that rises up, well, that's definitely an alternate, alternative history. Uh, and uh, that would also lead to, you know, just this massive problem. Which is so weird that the southern planters are the one that want this since they're not the ones that are the more, like, they're not the wealthiest of people in the country. So, um, you know, at least in my country, um, you know, the North is more is more wealthy in, in in this game right now than the South is. So th this is a little bit confusing to me, but okay. I guess I want to just give Yankee more power. 
Uh, so peace treaty signed. What I'm going to do here um, to try to call this a little bit, I'm not sure it's going to work. Um, since we've taken away almost all the debt now, we're down to 601,000. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce taxes. This is going to give us a little bit of a deficit for a little while uh, while the barracks uh, grows. But I'm hoping that by doing this, we can um, make these groups a little bit happier. And because of that, they'll be less likely to revolt against me um, because they'll have less taxes and their quality of life will all go up because of those lower taxes. So for a temporary sake, we're going to take a deficit here while we construct additional barracks. And eventually, I would like to reform the tax system anyway. Um, but I'm going to do that after we get the slavery ban enacted. So we're going to we're going to try that. Now, I also have an extra 200 authority. And because of that, I think we can go in and suppress the industrialists as well. With that extra authority. Um, let me make sure double check we are in fact suppressing the southern planters as well we are so we're gonna suppress both of these parties because they're the ones that are radicalizing and we want less people to join them and it looks to me like the revolution has stalled at 60 percent which is wonderful we want to see that and if people's quality of life begin to improve because of the lower taxes um we hopefully will begin to see less radicalization here i'm wanting to see this number fall but it doesn't look like it is um but we'll, we'll, we'll deal with it, okay? So um, that's how I'm going to deal with it. I'm going to give people lower taxes in hopes that they're okay with it. And now that we're only building two things at once, we can see that the money is actually positive while we construct, which is good. Uh, so we only have 890000 left in our deficit. Uh, sorry, in our, in our debt. Get out of my way. There we go. Uh, our principal is less than a million now, and we are profitable. And once these railways are complete, we're definitely profitable. But we have... Shortages in Pennsylvania. Let's see. Dye is short. Uh, yeah, it's just dye shortages. Mm, okay. Well, let me use some of this extra bureaucracy I have. We have some ineffective trade routes. And I think the Mexican trade route for dye is ineffective. Um, which is which sucks. I don't know if I can get dye anywhere else, but I'll try it. So let's get rid of these unproductive trade routes. And with that, we have 769 bureaucracy left, which is a lot. Let's see if we can use some of that. We have a massive surplus of fabric, and yet still, despite that, clothes are more expensive. That doesn't compute with me. Why would this be? Oh, right, because it dies. Right, we have a massive shortage in dye, that's why. Um, all right, so let's, let's solve that so we can bring the price of clothing down and everyone can be happy with that. So um, we'll try to import dye, and it doesn't look like anyone has it. That's my problem. Nobody ever freaking has this stuff. Um, and we can make this in synthetic plants and in dye plantations. So synthetic plants. I don't know. We don't have aniline, so we can't build them. And dye plantations requires us to have the fertility for that kind of thing. And I don't know of any... Uh, building, I don't know of any location that has fertility for dyes. And that is a problem. If I can't import this. So Mexico has just stopped producing dyes. Is that is that what I'm is that what I'm seeing right now? They've just stopped producing it right here. Not productive. Why are why is this not productive? The price is super low. I mean if the price is super low for you, I would like to import it. Maybe if I tell them I want to import it, the production will go up. I mean, maybe if it's just like, hey, if I open up a route for this with Mexico, I, I can't. I can't open up a route with Mexico. Why not? Has an embargo against the United States. They have embargoed me. Mexico embargoed me. Oh, how the tables have turned. So that is... A really harmful thing, actually. Um, it means we're not going to be able to use dye for our clothing for a little while. So we're going to have to pull the um, sewing machine was using dye. I'm going to have to pull dye, dye usage back and just do hand-sewn clothing, which uh, means a lot less clothing. So this is, uh, uh, this is not good. I need to find a location for dye. And it looks like I need a lot of dye for this too. And it's it's really frustrating to me. The one thing I don't like about the game right now is it it's just like the the options for trade are so restricted right now. Um 
I'm not able to to do this. And when did you enact this? You enacted this. Uh, ongoing efforts to damage relations are at 71% progress. So Mexico is damaging relations with me. Is that what it is? Because I'm not trying to damage relations with Mexico. But apparently they're trying to damage relations with me. <laughs> that sucks. Uh, we were sending all sorts of stuff. So that die route is going to be a problem. Uh, also, we discovered gold in South Dakota. That's pretty good. Um, yeah, good news, everyone. There's gold in South Dakota now. People could go get that if they want to. Uh, this die issue is... is so, like, like I said, there's like very little places that I can get these products. It's like I can't trade with everyone in the world, it seems. I can only trade with specific people for specific products. And I can't believe that Mexico is the only place that has adequate production of dyes. Um, but they kind of stuck them. They kind of killed their own industry because I was their massive. I was importing this a lot, and uh, now it seems like I have to try to get it from the British, and the Dutch, Nicaragua. I mean, I guess I can try to open it up with these two places and see if I just use all this bureaucracy to get it here. But we'll try to get it from everyone and see if we can't, you know, see if we can't get the dyes to straighten out. But you know. Clothing prices are going to be higher for a little while, and that just sucks. So dyes are going to be very hard to get for a little, a little while in America, which might help the revolution, to be honest. Um, so you got import routes for dyes, dyes, dyes. Yep, yep. Can I see the prices of dyes, though? I want to see if dye is going down. Wine went down, explosives went up a little bit, and tea went down. I like how all the cities around the United around Washington are about to revolt, right? You can see these little these little towns right here, right? Uh, Afro Afro American people have begun to migrate to Liberia. Good luck with that. Um, you can see this though, right? All these little towns that have the red flag, these are the towns that would end up seceding if this revolution reaches 100%. So basically, just surrounding DC right now, which is not not too great. Um, military. I hate that I have all these barracks, but no, no actual soldiers in them. I have the ability to have many more conscripts, and I will do that. Um, if I must do that, I will. But again, most of my soldiers and conscripts are in the north. All right, so we have now banned slavery. It is done. We have managed to make, we managed to do it in 1862, everyone. Just a little bit before real, the real world managed to do it. And that's because we don't have a civil war, at least not yet. Um, we didn't have to fight for it to be fully impl implemented. But now that it's implemented and they haven't revolted, it means Alabama and all these other southern states are no longer employing slaves. It means that the southern plantations will now use uh, laborers and aristocrats and farmers and clergymen. They will finally now not be using slaves. And so these industries are now really important uh, to start expanding upon. We can expand upon them. Wheat is not very productive. It's not very profitable for the farmers in Alabama because we have a surplus of it. So we can go in and do vineyards instead. Um, this will actually produce more grain. I didn't know that. A vineyard will produce more grain. Huh. But it will also produce more wine, which we can export, hopefully. Um, we can go into Mississippi, and we need additional industries for these things, right? So I'm thinking we get a uh, fishing wharf in here, because I'd like to get to canned food eventually, and a logging camp. Give them extra jobs that they would like to, uh, to work. And maybe if we can improve the quality of life in the South now, we can reduce the revolution chances. But even though the revolution is happening in the north, so actually that doesn't matter. Um, so we w we want to put as much effort as we can, though, into again quelling this revolution, so we don't have to deal with it. Steel frame buildings are unlocked. This is good. All of our productions can start switching to this if we want to. Uh, we go to buildings construction and the construction sector, and um, we can just change this. If we change all of our construction sector nationwide to steel frame buildings. We will use less fabric. We will use less wood. We will use a lot less iron. Iron prices will plummet. Oh, that's actually crazy. Um, we will use more explosives. We will use more tools. We will use more steel. So we're not quite ready to do this because 
we already have uh, a good amount of iron in the store right now. Um, we are overproducing wood, overproducing fabric. We should switch our lumber mills to do hardwood instead um, because this we won't need as much wood. So we can switch to hardwood on a lot of those things. Keep the price of wood balanced um, for fabric. That's a little bit of an issue. We could start exporting fabric because um, we have a huge surplus of it. And we could also maybe do the same thing for iron because we'll have too much of it. Glass will need to be expanded upon as well as, as explosives and tools, obviously. So let's start working on those industries and see if we can't um, give it those more advanced things going. So Kentucky, we have, um, we're probably gonna need more coal mines to make this extra steel and stuff. So let's get the coal mines reconfigured here so that they can use this. Do you have a rail system? You do not. Let's go ahead and get that in there. Um, Kentucky, I'm also going to go ahead and give you a barracks because you are the South and you're not part of... Oh, yes, you are. Never mind. Well, I already added barracks is here. Uh, the chemical plants are still purring along, making explosives, but the explosives are... They're discounted 29%. We're going to start using more of them when we construct things. So that should equalize the price, which will make this chemical plant much more productive. Um, let's see about glass. So glass is uh, a little bit more expensive. We can expand this. It's quite productive. So we can expand the glass works. I think if I do bone china, we end up using more dye, which is a problem at the moment. Um, so I don't want to do this yet. If I can get a source of dye imported, that'd be great. Let me check the market really quick. Did any of these trade routes, any of these dye uh, trade routes, are they productive at all? Because um, I'm trying to import them. So it looks like we have six for a total of 201 on the import. So these are a little bit more productive. Now that we're requesting it, those industries are ramping up production. Okay, good. We're going to be able to get that. Um, I want to say that um, we can make more porcelain ourselves. We don't need to worry about that. We're going to be using a lot less fabric once we do this. So let's go ahead and maybe send some fabric out to the French and maybe even send it out to the Dutch market or the Haitian market. We can send it to, ha yeah, to Haiti. Um, we also have uh, a plethora of grain. We can send out the Dutch and British. And uh, we're making extra steamers, which is very interesting. So we can maybe send those to the British as well. All right, um, we can import coal, but there's really not a good source of it just yet. I want to import tools from the British, and I also want to have my tool industry expanded and not just all focused on New York City. Um, so maybe we can get some tools being made somewhere else. Uh, how about we can do this? Uh, also, this, lo this logging camp here, right? We want this to be an electric sawmill, but we need electricity. Electricity is very expensive, and I need to generate electricity. I haven't done that in this game yet. Uh, we're producing it in power plants. Okay, so we need a power plant. Um, does that go in here? Yeah. Power plant. Okay, so it's going to cost me 1.8k per week. It's going to generate 36 infrastructure, which is pretty good, I guess. Uh, Virginia has the infrastructure to deal with that, I think. Uh, I don't know if that, I, I don't know how to read this. When it says plus 36 infrastructure, I believe that this means that it, it occupies 36 infrastructure, but because it's a green number, I think it maybe it expands infrastructure. We could place a power plant in a state that needs more infrastructure. Uh, Pennsylvania could be one of those things. Our taxation capacity is still low in New York City. Damn it. Get the government administration building up. Let's do this really quickly, right? This one right here. This one? Yes, this one. Put it to the top of the list and get this done. Uh, and you can see that we've dropped taxes, right? We've lowered taxes from that baseline, from that middle ground. And we, um, we're we still not losing money all that much with that lowered taxes. But that's great. But I would like to profit instead with the lowered taxes. And so I'm going to implement a new law here in a second that will help us make more money with the same tax level um and now i want to i want to go into military technology too because i think it's time to start taking back our territory from from mexico they want to embargo us fine we'll take their land that has the dyes and then we all have the dye for ourselves i think that's probably the better way to go here um maybe repeaters would be a good thing uh listen officers military statistics we can do negative 20 percent mobilization goods requirement that's pretty good it'll just save me money every time i mobilize and we're going to be mobilizing quite a bit here i think uh and trench works 
trench works. Uh, we get uh, trench infantry, trench infantry from the barracks. And these guys have... Okay, so these guys are cool. Negative 25% profits is captured, but they also don't lose as many. Ah, so trench infantry, this makes sense. Trench infantry is a, a good infantry to employ if you're trying to defend a line. Because you're building trenches, and you can trench down, you can hunker down, and you can defend better, um, but you, you can't capture as well. So that, that makes sense. And then there's barbed wire fences, which I, I guess, I, whatever. Um, I'm, I'm thinking, I want repeaters here, though, because repeating rifles are going to be very good and um you know we can we can produce them we can maybe even ship them out um i'm just looking for something that gives our troops an edge though is what i'm hoping to get and i don't i'm not necessarily sure yeah shrapnel artillery this is what we want plus 20 percent morale damage oh that sounds great although they do more devastation which is you know i'll have to fix it after i'm done breaking it right but it's fine. Uh, so I think I, maybe I'll, we'll start this. Breach loading artillery. We'll try this, and we'll start using that against Mexico as we go. Uh, so that's our research. But I, I think I have a law that I'd like to implement. And now that I have these guys all really happy, pretty much everybody is happy, even the industrialists. All right, sorry about that little glitch there. I had a little bit of a crash. Interesting. Um, so I want to go into politics, and I don't think it'll make me more money, but I think it'll give me more laborers, really, because um, we already have proportional taxation, and um, I took a look at graduated taxation, and it actually makes us less money. So, okay. So we're going to be barely unprofitable while we're constructing, uh, but that's not a big deficit. So um, what I'd like to do is switch things to go into finally getting rights for women now. Because um, we have everybody happy, like I was saying. Uh, we have everybody kind of happy about, about this right now. Southern planters are neutral, but this is the ideal moment right here. Barnabas Emerson, he's gonna go down in history as a really awesome president because not only did he end slavery, but he's also gonna institute school. Uh, he, was he the one? I think it was the person before him that finally got the kids to go to school. I think that happened before the election. Uh, but uh, he is going to get started the movement of getting women to be equals. Okay, so um, propertied women is the next step in the evolution here. I can't get them in the workplace and finally down to suffrage, but I'd like to get them in the workplace at minimum so that I can have more laborers as we proceed to expand our industries. Um, obviously, this is the goal, but I have to do this in steps, it looks like, because, well, um, we have to get feminism in order to get women in the workplace, and that's also what's necessary for su women's suffrage. But property women is something I can do now. Now this will radicalize the evangelicals down to negative 14 and it will radicalize the southern planters as well so they will hate me for doing this. However, if we take a look at their total clout, the uh, southern planters are 9.2%. Uh, there's not a whole lot of them uh, left and the evangelicals aren't even on the list anymore. They're marginalized. We don't even have them anymore in this list. So there's not that many of them is what I'm saying. Uh, evangelicals are probably really low. I, I see, the, I'm looking at the clout and I think evangelicals are this, maybe this gray one here. I, I'm not entirely sure which one they are. In, in any case, um, because they have such low clout, I don't see them as much of a threat here. So I'm gonna go ahead and implement propertied women as well and try to give them the opportunity to finally own property. Yes, that's what propertied women does. It gives them the ability to actually take ownership of things instead of being owned by their men. So Barnabas is going to be, like I said, he's like the new Abe Lincoln. Good job, Barnabas. Um, American market. So ammunition's gone up. We need to work on that because we're about to go to war. Uh, dye is still very expensive and hardwood has gone up. We need to switch our logging camps to doing hardwood. I'm going to switch you to hardwood, get you the steam donkey. And I don't think North Carolina has a rail yet. They do not. We're going to get a railway on your... on the schedule here. And really just adding a railway to every uh, to every state is a good idea, as long as we can afford it. Which I can't really afford it right now unless I raise those taxes back up. Um, and I'd rather not do that while I have a contentious bill uh, on the docket, because you can see revolution has begun again. <laughs> uh, and this time it's basically, yep, the entire North as well. Uh, so we'll see how what this what happens here. They would like to preserve legal guardianship and uh, the revolution has a plus 63, uh, uh, 64 on the movement and I may not be able to do it yet. We will see. 
the southern planters this is why i've been suppressing them all this time to try to get their the group super low this is how you avoid the civil war you just make the population of the people who are going to rise up so small that they have no ability to really rise up in good enough numbers to start a war that's how i needed to do it we beat our enemy before we even start them as an enemy uh, so education has been rising, which is good, and law enforcement has been going up too, which is great. And obviously, we're going to have to keep an eye on this, but it looks like it's going to stop around 61 right now. 62, 61. So pr progress uh, progress per week looks like at zero. At the moment, it's stalled here, but it's good because look at all the soldiers they would have. My entire army, basically. <laughs> so let's not let them have that just yet. Uh, so um, looking at Contagious Diseases Acts. The rural folk in Maryland, led by Zepp the Bankhead, are demanding that the government take a stance on prostitution. Uh, they request the enforcement of laws that allow police to detain women suspected of being prostitutes in lock hospitals on the grounds that they spread venereal disease. Uh, so if I was to do this and enact the law, I would get more clout with uh, the interest group, but the lower strata would lose some standard of living permanently. That's not what I want. Uh, or these laws are inhumane, and I just simply lose some clout with rural folk. I like this much more. I'm not going to do that. A permanent standard of living decrease. And it's probably going to target women who aren't doing it, but they're just suspected. It's just going to create problems with the police in the future. Not going to bother with it. Let people do what they do, man. Uh, gold fields depleted in South Dakota. That is unfortunate indeed. The fields are all depleted now. Now... Colorado's still kicking it. Yeah, they've got a whole bunch in these fields. I don't know how much uh, reserves they have. Like, I don't know how much uh, gold are in here. But what I do know is that I really want to get Mexico. Um, and I, I just give me this bill and then we'll start. Uh, that's it. I, I wanted to get children out of the factories, get slavery abolished, and then at least get women the, the opportunity to have, to, to have their own property. Um, I, I need feminism as a research before I can get them in the workplace. But I needed all that stuff done. I, I wanted it done without the chance of revolution happening. Um, so that this is this bar needs to go away before I start it too. Uh, but I wanted that before I started going after Mexico because Mexico has Utah, which isn't a big deal. It has Arizona, not a big deal, although there is some gold fields here. But what they do have and I really need is California. California has gold fields. I actually didn't know that Arizona had gold fields, so now I want Arizona too. Um, but it has gold fields, and they are minting like crazy over there, right? So I want to get these territories taken back because right now Mexico's just like keeping them. They got gold fields in Colorado here too. So I want to get these and get it out of here. And and the interesting part about this is that there are five gold fields, five of them in Arizona, and ten of them in uh, California. And so like getting these in Nevada too, 13 of them in Nevada. So I got to get these territories uh, taken away because there's lots of gold over in the West. Um, so I think that as soon as this is no longer a risk for me, and as soon as this bill passes, which has nearly a 50-50 chance, 43.5%, when this thing fills up, we're either going to get a uh, passage or an event. And there's an event. Okay. So um, in American women's travels, an American woman's travels. Sorry. Uh, let's take a look. Let's see what that is. Uh, so it says a popular set of travel writings by a female author have been published lending support for the property women law. This is perfect. Um, what a great boon for our cause plus 10% or we could get a bigger publisher. Um, and what this does is it gives me a chance, a chance at uh, a 20% chance of success increase, uh, but also a risk, a one in third risk of reducing the chances of success, maybe because of having like a, a bad, I guess a backlash. So I guess um, maybe a bad publisher or something like that. Um, I'm going to take the guaranteed 10% risking it. And then also, you know, like if this was a 66% for 20 or nothing happens, I might try it, but the, the risk of losing it makes this not worth it. So I'm going to take the boon for the cause and get 53% uh, to pass on this. So, um, next time around, you know, um, if I had an extra authority, I would be able to have a faster enactment time on this. So maybe what I'll do is since we don't have, hang on, is it, no, it's not the industrialist anymore. So since we don't have the industrialist on my back anymore, uh, yeah, we're going to stop suppressing them. And now that we've stopped suppressing them, 
we have a 25% bonus to our enactment time. So this thing will go around a little bit faster now, which is going to be good for me. Uh, we still have a deficit and now I'm, I'm backed into back into good debt now because I'm building things, right? But if I raise taxes, we're going to get even more radicals and I don't want that yet. You can see that loyalists are actually declining and radicals are starting to rise again. I don't know if that's because of quality of life. It probably is. Um, I haven't actually looked at the market in a while and it looks like furniture is not productive. Um, let's take a look at your inputs. Wood's too expensive. Uh, tools are expensive. Fabric is still cheap because we're exporting it. Coal is expensive. Okay, uh, so we obviously still have that problem. Then there's also a bureaucracy issue there, so we can get rid of those trade routes. Um, I would like to maybe send some steamers to Russia, Russia's market, see if they want them. Uh, we can send... Mm, I don't really want to export steel, to be honest. Uh, liquor, we can export liquor. <laughs> Russia can have our vodka. See how they like that. Uh, and then coal, let's bring it in from the Dutch and Prussian market. And uh, I think we can probably do something about the price of wine and all that stuff um, by shifting some of our maize fields to being a vineyard. We can get more wine on the market as well as more harvesting tools and using more fertilizer as well. Uh, we just need more tools to be produced. I mean, tools is like everything in this game, right? So um, we want to increase this, increase this, and increase this. And then we definitely need the glassworks to be increased as well. Uh, we're going to bump it up two levels. And so it's just a matter of waiting for that to happen now. Uh, increasing export value was su was successfully completed. Okay, cool. So this is like another journal entry thing, right? Uh, so we'll see how that affects some prices on the market uh, as we go forward. Uh, it looks like porcelain is still incredibly expensive. I need to do something about that. Dye has now dropped in price. Uh, is this because... Like, these guys are have really... It, it, dye is so unproductive because there's just so much of it now. These guys have just decided they don't want to do it anymore, which is which is, which sucks. Does Texas have a... Texas has no dyes. Okay. Well, we're going to have to take that away. I, I think this revolution is kind of stalled out. Um, but again, I think I think you'll get more unrest if you're at war. Uh, there's more chances of their life to decrease in value when, during war, and that will radicalize more. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to wait until this revolution risk is gone uh, before I... Uh, uh, before I go to war here. So, civilizing mission. Uh, we have plus one colonial affairs investment. So, I think I want to do that. Uh, yeah, colonial growth generation. That's good. Uh, of course, more growth means more workers, but it also means more needs. More diverse people. But as long as we keep these guys attractive to join, and I can actually bolster them to make their clout even more attractive to join, uh, then... Uh, you know, the higher population is good for me because I get the higher population directed where I want them. They do not go to the Southern Planters. They do go to the Intelligentsia. But we're going to try to work on that. Although the authority now has reduced my enactment time a little bit. And I, I think maybe now is not the right time to do that. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and stop bolstering them. Maybe now is not quite the right time to have that happen. Um, so this thing is a journal entry wants me to lower consumption prices. I imagine probably coal and iron are pretty expensive at the moment. Let's double, let me double check. All right. So it's a slight discount, but it's the coal that's going to be higher price, right? Yeah. 22% tools is 22% and explosives are actually nice and, 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 and transportation is cheap now. Engines are very expensive. Whoa, Detroit. Hey man, you guys are really productive over here. I appreciate that. Uh, however, we're going to need to expand you. So I think we're going to get you to expand at least two more levels. Uh, do you have the infrastructure to handle that? Oh, you definitely do. This is very good. So we're going to get you expanded. All of our engines are coming out of Detroit right now, and I am loving it, man. Keep that Detroit motor running. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm going to let this run a little bit. Uh, and when we come back for the next one, we're hopefully going to have no revolution. I would hope anyway. Um, we're going to get out of debt finally. 
because I'm going to put taxes back to the way they were. As soon as revolution risk is gone, I'm going to put taxes back the way they were. And we just need to get uh, just, just need to get everything sorted with pricing and stuff so that I can attack Mexico and get this gold. All right. So come on back for the next one. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Be sure to like the uh, thumbs up the video and stuff, too. I should probably say that at the beginning of videos, right? I should probably say thumbs up the video, you know, in the beginning instead of the end. I mean, that's what most people do. And their channels are way more successful than mine. So I don't know. Maybe I'll start doing that. Anyway, see you, see you later. Bye bye.